Hi everyone, I'm going to present FlexOS, making OS isolation flexible, a cooperation between the University of Manchester, UPB, and NEC. If we take a look at current OS designs, it is quite clear that security or isolation strategies are typically fixed at design time. Taking the example of a typical monolithic OS, for example, Linux, there is the user kernel separation and the process abstraction using the page table, and this is quite set in stone. Similar observations can be made for other OS designs, such as microkernels or single address based operating systems. The result is a view of the operating system that does not work very well with modern specialization or hardware heterogeneity trends. What, for example, if you want to remove user kernel separation in Linux? This requires major rewrites. Or what if you want to use Cherry capabilities or MPK? Same problem. In this work, we propose to take a different approach and decouple security or isolation mechanisms from the design of the OS. Clearly, the goal is to be able to achieve a range of security slash performance trade-offs instead of a single point in the design space. We aim to support a range of isolation mechanism, hardware and software, and granularities. In a sense, we want to specialize the operating system for security for given use cases. In order to achieve this, we propose a design based on a highly modular LibOS Unicraft. All kernel and user land components are developed as standalone libraries. As part of a porting phase, we pre-compartmentalize them. This means that cross library calls and shared data are replaced by an abstract construct. We call them gates, data sharing primitives, and we define them as part of the FlexOS API. At build time, these placeholders are instantiated with a particular mechanism. It can be a function call if you put the two components together, but also MPK domain switches or, MP or VM RPCs if you want to go crazy. Let's take a closer look at the API. In this example, we consider a simple call to receive from the application implemented by the network stack. As part of the porting process, we would annotate shared data and replace cross library function calls by gate placeholders. Then at build time, if the network stack and the application are placed in different compartments and MPK is used, we would replace stack allocation with, for example, shared heap allocations and replace the gate placeholders with MPK gates. On the other hand, if we put the application and the network stack together, we would not change the stack allocation and we would use a simple function call since they are together. Now, this approach allows for a very large design space. Not all of these configurations make sense, it being from a security or performance perspective. Also, if we take a look at the security side of things, interesting questions arise. For example, how can we guarantee that the properties of components hold? If I have a formally verified component in my OS and I put it together with a plain C one, then for sure the properties of my verified component will be void. And clearly, if we just blindly compartmentalize, a lot of mistakes can be done. In order to tackle this problem, we propose to enrich the operating system with a tool that, on one hand, selects configurations so that properties hold, and on the other one, further prunes based on security and performance. Taking a look at the problem of properties, if we want to be able to automatically reason about them, we need to have a way to describe them. And so we have designed a domain-specific language that allows us to describe the properties of each component and the expectation that it has on the properties of other components. Let's take an example. If we look at a formally verified scheduler, it is going to have a number of properties. Among them, the memory that the component can access, since we have formally verified it, we know that it will only read and write its own memory or shared memory. We also know that it will only call the allocators function, for example. The API is also very well defined and the requirements too. This is, for example, as part of the preconditions. The scheduler will expect that no other component is going to read, uh, is going to write its own memory. This is private. Now, if we take a plain C component, such as the network stack, the properties are going to be much simpler. It is 
going to be able to read and write and pull anything because if the plane C component is compromised, anything can happen. There are no requirements. Now that we have this DSL and this metadata, we can determine pairwise compatibility such that properties hold. If we take a look again at the verified scheduler and the network stack, clearly we cannot put them together because the network stack does not fulfill the verified scheduler's requirements. Now determining configuration so that properties hold becomes a graph coloring problem. There are several solutions we can, we can further prune based on security and performance. We have developed a prototype on top of Unicraft with two gate implementation, Intel MPK and VMs. We have ported the network stack and the scheduler to run as isolated components. Here I am going to present some results that we obtained with Redis and MPK, but there is more in the paper. In this example, we have four different isolation strategies and up to three compartments. We gather results for three payload sizes and two different gates implementations. One that shares the call stack across compartments and one that isolates it properly. If we take a look at the results for the second scenario, we confirm an obvious expectation that we had. The number of compartments impacts performance. The remaining numbers, however, are much less obvious because of communication patterns, sometimes reducing or increasing the number of compartments does not affect performance because num the number of domain crossings doesn't change. We also observe batching effects. For 500 bytes, the impacts of isolation is hidden. This highlights that, we, that the choice of isolation strategy depends on the use case. Finally, the type of gate impacts performance as well, and that is an expectation that we had. In all, this prototype highlights the design space that FlexOS can achieve, its complexity, and motivates for automatic exploration. This work opens for a number of interesting questions. Among them, the difficulty to consider security only from the perspective of isolation. APIs that are developed from the beginning as a trust boundary, such as the system called API, carefully check arguments and make sure to avoid confused APT situation. This level of care is not necessarily present in APIs that were not developed as a trust boundary. This is something that we want to think about. Another question is the porting effort one. As we have seen, FlexOS requires a certain degree of porting. How can we automate it? And for the DSL metadata, how can we make sure it is correct? As a conclusion, we highlighted the need for more isolation flexibility, whether it is for specialization purposes, to adapt to new hardware, or simply because your primitives broke. Current approaches take one isolation approach at design time, effectively representing a single point in the design space. In this work, we proposed FlexOS, an OS that decouples isolation from the OS design, effectively making isolation decisions at build time. We presented early results and motivated automatic exploration of the new trade-off space. Thank you. I'm happy to take questions now.